Happy New Year, everyone. I am so grateful that it is 2021. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you 10 different Instant Pot chicken recipes. I asked on my Instagram page, what is one thing that you always have in the freezer? And I was surprised at how many people said chicken. Whether that's chicken breasts or bone-in chicken or chicken thighs, I have recipes for all of those things today. Before we get started with the cooking, I wanted to model my new apron for you. Zoom in on that, baby. <laughs> so it's an embroidered uh, apron. It says 365 days, always cooking. If you're always cooking in your kitchen, get yourself one of these aprons. I will put a link in the description below. I think they're around between 20 and 25 bucks. And they're super fun and they keep you clean while you're in your kitchen cooking. If you haven't already yet, you can get your copy of the 365 Days of Pressure Cooking Cookbook. As you can see, it's super fun because look, it has the spiral binding. This is my copy, so I wrote my name in it. But I also sign every single copy that I send out. And it's fun because the it lays flat to cook. And every recipe has one of these QR codes on it so that you can um, scan the QR codes and go to my blog and get the pictures and get the nutrition information and read any reviews or notes that I might have on the recipe. But this baby is thick. It, it has over 500 pages and it's about 400 different, mostly all dinner recipe ideas. And if you're a fan of what I make here on YouTube, you'll definitely be a fan of this cookbook. So you can get your copy today. I will put a link in the description below and then you can um, get going with all the cooking that you'll be doing this year. All of the chicken recipes that I'm gonna be sharing with you today are in this book, except one. One is a little bit too new to be in this book. The rest of them are oldies but goodies and they're all in this cookbook. If you love my YouTube videos and you wish you could get more content, more Instant Pot recipes, I think you'd really love my daily Instant Pot recipe emails that I send out. I send out one every single day, 365 days a year, and it has an Instant Pot recipe or a trick or tip that will be very helpful to you. So you can um, sign up and I put that in the description below as well. Now we'll get cooking onto all of the 10 chicken. The first thing that you wanna do is just turn your Instant Pot to the saute setting. And then when it says hot, you can start adding in your ingredients. Add in four tablespoons of butter. And then we're adding in, I did one small onion, which is about a cup. A cup of diced onion. And we'll let the onion get soft and translucent. That will take about three or four minutes. That's been going for about three minutes. So I'm gonna add in uh, a spoonful, probably about a tablespoon, maybe just a little bit less of garlic, minced garlic. And I'm also gonna add in my rice at this time. Now this is a special kind of rice. It's called arborio rice. And the reason that I'm using this kind of rice is because it is the kind of rice you use for um, risotto. So it gets nice and creamy and it's worth finding at the grocery store and buying just for this recipe. I think you're really gonna like it. So we're gonna add in a cup and a half of this rice and we're kinda just gonna stir it in with the delicious butter and onions and garlic um, just, for, just for a minute here. Now we're gonna add in a cup of broth. So. We're going to do three cups of broth total. So just add in one cup at this time and let the rice kind of soak it up. I'm actually not doing broth. I'm doing um, better than bouillon chicken base. So I'm adding in three cups of water plus three teaspoons or a tablespoon of the chicken base. And you can use broth or you can use better than bouillon. I like better than bouillon just because I always have it in my fridge. It's very handy. I buy the big container at Costco when I go there. So but you choose whatever you like better than bouillon just gives a lot of good flavor okay so we're going to let that just soak up for about a minute all right while that's soaking up the liquid i'm going to add in some of the seasonings um, i'm going to add in three-fourths teaspoon of garlic salt a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper a half a teaspoon of paprika i'll give it a nice color and then a teaspoon of onion powder all right and you can see we're almost there. The rice is almost soaked up, that liquid. So we'll add in the rest of our broth at this time. 
So add in the rest of the water or the broth, whatever you're using. And then push the cancel button on your Instant Pot. Turn it off the saute setting. So I'm just going to push cancel right there. All right. Now we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients. So this is going to be really good. Today I'm going to be adding in chicken, mushrooms, and kale. So I'm going to be using these chicken thighs. We buy this big bag at Costco usually. Um, it's just very convenient. They're individually frozen. Um, they're very flat, so they actually cook pretty quickly in the Instant Pot. So I'm going to add in um, about a pound and a half, which will be about six chicken thighs. And then I'm going to add in mushrooms today. I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I know uh, my kids aren't always the biggest fans, but if you like them, add them in. And I'm just doing eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. And then to just add some greens and some variation, we're adding in, I've chopped up about two cups of kale leaves and I've uh, I did not include the stems. That's the really bitter part, so make sure not to do that. And then we're going to close up this pot. All right, here we go. I'll do it backwards. All right. We'll close up the pot, set it to ceiling, and then I'm going to set the manual button um, to 10 minutes. Once the pot is done cooking, wait for it to count up to at least five minutes, and then you can release any remaining pressure by moving the valve to venting. And then you just remove the lid when you can and stir in about one to two cups of grated cheddar, whatever you, however much you like. And you'll just see this cheesy chicken and mushroom dish is gonna be so delicious for dinner tonight. So what I like to do is just taste a little bit, make sure it tastes okay. It tastes good, but you might need to add a little salt and pepper according to your own particular tastes. But doesn't that look so creamy and delicious? I'm gonna show you how to make the Cafe Rio chicken. So for this recipe, I like to use a combination of chicken breasts and chicken thighs, and these are all boneless, skinless. So I'm making a ton, like I said, for the amount of chicken I'm cooking, I'm using two different Instant Pots. Usually, for normal people, they wouldn't be making this much, uh, so you'd only need one Instant Pot. So into each pot, I'm gonna put a cup of just zesty Italian salad dressing. I just use the store brand. Use whatever you have or like. So I'll put half in there, and then half in this other pot. I'm gonna use a bunch of spices here. Garlic powder, chili powder, and then some cumin and some kosher salt. Now chicken puts off a lot of liquid, so I'm not too worried about the pots coming to pressure. If you're nervous about it, you can always add in a half cup, a cup of broth, and it should be just fine. So we're gonna put the lids on. Now I have the chicken breasts in this one and chicken thighs in this one, but they are gonna cook for about the same amount of time. Make sure the valves are set to ceiling, and then we're gonna set these. And I'm gonna put this one for it's not frozen, it's fresh chicken, so I'm only gonna do 12 minutes. And then on this one, I'll do, uh, I don't know, maybe 13, 14, 15 minutes. They'll both turn out really great. Let's see. So we'll do, I'll do 14 for the chicken thighs. And then we're gonna definitely do a natural pressure release with this chicken so that it can stay moist and tender. What I did with the chicken was let it do a full natural pressure release and then I just removed the lid and look, here we have our delicious chicken, which you can easily uh, shred with forks or you can even use your hand mixer. I know a lot of people like doing that. First, add in a half a cup of low sodium or light soy sauce. If you use regular soy sauce, it just gets way too salty. So try to find the low sodium kind. And then add in a half a cup of white vinegar. You can also use apple cider vinegar. And then three bay leaves. Just pop them right into the Instant Pot. Next, add in one teaspoon of whole peppercorns. And then we're gonna smash our garlic. We need six garlic cloves. You can just cut off that knobby end and then just get rid of that and peel off a little bit of the 
uh, paper that's on top. Then grab a knife with a flat edge and just smash the garlic, one, two, three, and smash it. <laughs> and then after it's smashed, you can just peel off the rest of any covering that's over the garlic cloves. And do this for six different cloves. This is what gives the flavor to the chicken. I'm using bone-in chicken today. I'm using chicken thighs. You can also use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. It's up to you. Um, I'm using three pounds of bone-in chicken. If you're using boneless chicken, use two pounds. We're gonna pressure cook for 15 minutes. And then once the time is up, release the pressure after it's sat there for about five to 10 minutes. Remove the lid. And now we're gonna reduce the sauce. So turn the Instant Pot to the off button and, and then push the saute button and set it to more. Adjust it to more using the plus or minus buttons. And then turn the chicken over so that the skin is facing down. And we're just gonna reduce the sauce. So really, it's just another easy part. All you have to do is walk away for seven minutes, keep the lid off, and that sauce is gonna boil away and reduce down so that there's not so much of it and so that it's a lot more flavorful. So you can see it boiling away here. And we're gonna remove the chicken once the seven minutes is up, place it on a platter or a plate. And it is just infused with all sorts of flavor. You can see now how much uh, sauce is reduced. Um, it's boiled away here, then evaporated. Pour the sauce on top of the chicken for more flavor. I like to serve this over rice. I make brown rice. We're gonna start the chicken gnocchi soup by pushing the saute button on your Instant Pot. And it should be on the more setting. If it's not, you can use the adjust button to change it. As the pot's heating up, we're gonna cut up some onion. When I'm cooking soup, especially, that's gonna have a lot of like scraps from the vegetables, I like to just have a little handy, what I call it is a garbage bowl, and that way I can just put anything that needs to go in the trash in that bowl instead of going back and forth to my trash can. It's just a handy little tip for you. All right, we're still waiting for the pot to heat up, and so we're gonna go ahead and mince our garlic. I like to use a garlic press. It just makes it super fast and easy. You don't even have to peel the uh, cloves of garlic. So I'll put a link to my garlic press in the notes below. Once the pot says hot, we're gonna add in our oil. Teaspoon of olive oil. Go ahead and just swirl that around so it covers the bottom of the pot. And then add in just your onion, not the garlic yet or else it will burn. Go ahead and stir the onion. Just get it coated with the oil really well. We're gonna let that saute for a couple minutes. Once the onion is starting to get really soft and translucent, go ahead and add in that garlic. And garlic burns really quickly, so we just wanna kind of stir it around just for maybe 20 seconds here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pour in five cups of water. And then I like to use the Better Than Bouillon um, chicken base. This is the one that I use. And it is um, the roasted chicken base. And I'm using um, four teaspoons of that. I get mine at Costco in just the big jars just because I use it so often. Um, but you can find it at a lot of stores. You can also find it online. Now we're gonna need two medium carrots. I already peeled these. And I'm just gonna do a nice little chop. You can also finely dice them, you can grate them, whatever you prefer. I like to store my celery in aluminum foil. It keeps it nice and fresh and it keeps a lot, it keeps it crisper for longer. So I need a couple of celery ribs. I'm gonna cut these into quarter inch pieces. Today I'm gonna to be using just frozen chicken breasts that I have from Costco. Um, you can also use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. It's up to you, really. I'm gonna add in a pound and a half, which for me, in using these big ones from Costco, is usually two chicken breasts. And I'll add those straight into the pot frozen and it's, it's gonna be just fine. 
<clears throat> now I'll add in the spices. I have a teaspoon of dry oregano, two teaspoons of dried basil, a teaspoon of dried parsley. Then I'm gonna do one bay leaf. Little tip for you, if you have a Winco, buy your bay leaves in the bulk section. I can buy a whole bag of bay leaves for just a couple of pennies, really. It's so cheap. So I'm gonna add in one bay leaf in there. Gives it lots of flavor. And then we'll do a teaspoon of kosher salt and a teaspoon of black pepper. So go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure this valve is set to sealing. And we're gonna set the time for 12 minutes. Oh, first you have to push the off button to take it off the saute mode. Then you push manual. And I'm gonna do 12 minutes because the chicken was frozen and it was about 12 ounces. So I wanted to, um, that's just a good rule is for how many ounces the chicken breasts were, that's how many minutes you'd put on. Once the pot gets to over 10 minutes, you can go ahead and move the valve from sealing to venting. Okay, while that's releasing all the pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cut kale. So you're gonna to wanna to take your kale leaf and the bitter portion is really the stem, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure to cut the stem off. So I just cut it like, make a cut there and a cut there and cut that stem off and toss it in the trash. Then you can go ahead and chop it or slice it, cut it however you like. I'm gonna do a little bit thinner. I like the thinner pieces rather than big chunks in my soup. But it's really up to you and what you prefer. Once you can, go ahead and remove the lid. Go ahead and get the chicken out and place it on a cutting board. Um, before we shred that, I'm going to go ahead and add in the gnocchi into the soup. So this is the package that I got. I got it at Smith's. Um, it's like the Kroger market or private selection brand. And it's a pound of gnocchi. And gnocchi is just basically little Italian dumplings. And they are delicious. So, But they only take a few minutes to cook. So we're just going to, we didn't pressure cook them because they would get mushy. So we're going to turn this to the man or to the saute button. Push off and then turn it to saute. And then we're gonna add this gnocchi in here while we're getting the chicken cut up, these are gonna cook. I'm gonna add the entire package. And you know these are done when they start floating to the top. So it should only take two to three minutes in boiling liquid for these to cook. I like to use these shredding claws to shred my meat. I got these on Amazon for six bucks. I'll link to them in the notes below if you're interested. But they just act as a way to kind of shred the meat. You can also cube up the chicken into little bite-sized pieces if you don't like it shredded. I've warmed up some half and half, and I like to warm it up so that it doesn't curdle. I also like to just kind of put in a couple spoonfuls of the hot soup into the cream so that it doesn't Hurdle, and it can kind of just warm up gradually instead of it being shocked when you throw it into that pot of boiling liquid. Now I'm going to add in the kale that I cut up. I did about three large leaves. Stir in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. I like a thicker consistency, a more creamy and thick consistency to my soup, so I'm going to use cornstarch to thicken it up. What I like to do is make a cornstarch slurry. And I just do this by putting about three tablespoons of cornstarch in a bowl with three tablespoons of water. Stir it up until it's smooth and there's no lumps in there. Once it's smooth, you're going to just throw it into the pot with everything else. Gnocchi are floating to the top, so I know that the gnocchi are almost cooked through. And the soup is getting thickened from the cornstarch. All we have to do now is add in our bacon crumbled up six pieces of bacon and I'm going to go ahead and throw that into the pot. Okay, first thing that you want to do is add chicken to your instant pot. Now I've already 
Mine was fresh, uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I've trimmed it up a little bit. You can also use um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You can use frozen or fresh. All right, so you put your chicken in the Instant Pot, and then you go to your pantry and you see, or your fridge, and you see what you have. I had some zesty Italian. I had some balsamic dressing, and I also had this one um, unopened in my pantry, the Olive Garden Light Italian, and they're all really yummy. Um, today I'm gonna use this balsamic vinaigrette. And so any type of thin salad dressing, don't use anything creamy like ranch, that would burn, but something like this um, that's thinner and that's uh, not cream-based should work. So I'm gonna just do a cup of that. I'm gonna pour it over the chicken and it kind of serves as a marinade and a sauce at the same time. Now you can, you can put the lid on and cook straight away or if you want to serve rice with your in, um, with your chicken, then you can do the pot and pot method. And I'll show you how I do the pot and pot method with rice. Uh, silicone sling here. This is the one that I love and use all the time. I highly recommend it. It's the OXO brand and you can find it on Amazon. I'll put the link to it in the notes below. And then some sort of oven safe dish. And this one's stainless steel. And then you're going to need two cups of rice. And you can use, for this recipe, you can use white rice, jasmine rice. Um, this rice that I'm using is called converted rice or parboiled rice. And um, I'm going to do two cups in the pan. And I'm going to use a 1 to 1.5 ratio. So two cups of rice and then three cups of water. And then I'm going to put this nice lid right on top and send it down into the pot. So you can see how I've tried to get my chicken um, kind of in a flat layer there. Make sure it's all in one flat layer so that the pot of rice can sit on there fairly stable. And we're gonna drop the rice into the pot. Try to make it as even as possible so that one side of the rice doesn't get cooked more than the other side. I'm gonna do this. Put the lid on, valve is already set to sealing, and then uh, push the manual button or pressure cook button, and I'm gonna set the fresh chicken thighs to 15 minutes. So I allowed for a 10 to 20 minute natural pressure release, and then I'm just gonna take the rice out. It looks perfect. That's the great thing about pot and pot rice, it's really hard to get wrong. Look how good that rice turned out. All right, so let's look at the chicken here. Chicken looks good too. Now this is the chicken thighs and look how they just, with one fork here, I can even uh, shred them up very easily. Um, chicken breasts won't be as tender as this, but chicken thighs just get really nice. And you can serve them whole as they were, or you can cut them up, shred them up, and serve them over the rice with the juices in the pot. It's an easy two ingredient, almost stupid simple recipe but something that you can make with the things that you have at your house right now. Hopefully this video So the first thing I did was added one and a half pounds of chicken breast into the bottom of my Instant Pot. It's about two chicken breast halves. It looks like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in some chicken broth, the onion. I like to dice mine pretty fine because I don't like the big chunks of onion. Now I'm going to add in a can of Rotel. I like to use the mild um, because I'm wimpy when it comes to spice. Then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of ranch seasoning. This is almost, if you buy it in the packets, it's almost one whole packet full. This just gives it tons and tons of flavor. Then we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of garlic salt, a 
teaspoon of paprika. Now, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually be cooking the chicken in the bottom of the pot, and then I'm gonna add a pan on top of the chicken and cook the spaghetti at the same time. Is just grab um, a pan that will fit inside your Instant Pot. So this is seven inches in diameter. You can find something like this on Amazon. I'll link to this particular one if you're interested in the notes below. But it, see how it just fits really nice right inside of there? So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna fill this up with the spaghetti noodles and water. So for this recipe, I use eight ounces of spaghetti. I like to measure my pasta out on my little digital scale. I'll, I'll link to my um, particular scale you can see right there um, below in the notes if you're interested. I'm gonna measure out eight ounces of spaghetti. So that's about half a package. I like to go by the rule that um, two ounces of, of pasta per person is about right. So this recipe actually serves four people. In order for it to fit in the pan, you gotta break it in half. Okay, so that's eight ounces of spaghetti right there. I added about two cups of water to the pan. It's just enough to cover the spaghetti. Then I like to cover it. This particular pan came with a lid, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the lid, but you can also use foil if you don't have a lid. I like to be able to use a, a sling. I, make, I made this out of a, you can see this is like a silicone baking mat, and I just cut it into thirds. And what I do is I just go ahead and lay the pan in the middle of the silicone mat, and then I go ahead and lower this down into the pot. It just makes it easier to get the pot out after it's done cooking. Before I do that though, I'm gonna just kind of spread out the stuff that's in the pot. I'm just gonna kind of move this chicken down so it's a little bit more even. Perfect. That way the pot will sit on top of the food inside um, evenly and it won't like be tilted to one side or the other. So just go ahead and put that right into the pot. We're gonna go ahead and cover the pot. Make sure the valve is set to ceiling. And then I'm gonna set the manual button right here, manual, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 10 minutes. At that point, you're gonna hear the Instant Pot beep as soon as it kind of clicks over into the pressure building mode. Now you can go ahead and walk away and do whatever you need to do, clean up the dishes, go fold some laundry while this is cooking. We're gonna come back to this in just a few minutes when it's done. All right, so once your pot has counted down from the 10 minutes, it's gonna start counting up. And that just means it's switched over to the warm setting and it's no longer pressure cooking, but it's just the pressure still in there. It hasn't released yet. So that's why mine says um, L011. So it's been in there for 11 minutes after the timer has beeped. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and release any remaining pressure. The way that I'm gonna do that is just move this to venting. And there's just a little bit of pressure still in there. All right, once the pressure is totally released, we're gonna move the lid off. And then I'm gonna just have, make sure you have some sort of glove so you don't burn your fingers, but I'm gonna take this uh, silicone baking mat and kind of lift it out, lift the pan out using this as a sling. See how nicely that works? I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side so I'll be able to drain off my water from the spaghetti. I'm gonna use my colander and just drain off my spaghetti. All right, there's my spaghetti. Um, and now I have my chicken and the um, rotel and everything in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just shred up my chicken. Just gonna use tongs to kind of play, place the chicken on a cutting board or some sort of pan or something where you can easily shred it. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and add in um, a half of a block of cream cheese, so four ounces of cream cheese, into this hot liquid, and it will start melting as we shred up the chicken. I'm just gonna kind of stir that in. In fact, I'm gonna turn on my Instant Pot to the saute setting right here, so that it kind of can heat up and melt that cream cheese. While that's melting, I'm gonna go ahead and um, shred up my chicken. 
I'm gonna use these like claw type things. I got these on Amazon for I think $6. I'll, I'll link to them below if you're interested in buying them. But they just kind of help you shred up meat really easy. Okay, once your chicken is all shredded up, go ahead and add in the spaghetti into the pot. Give it a quick stir. Your cream cheese should be almost getting really melty by now. You can kind of just stir that spaghetti in. The cream cheese gets all melty. Once the cream cheese is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chicken. Finally, we're gonna add in our last ingredients. A couple cups of grated cheddar cheese. I like to use medium or sharp because it gives it so much flavor. I also like to grate my own cheese because then it doesn't clump up and get all weird. Oh, it is so creamy and delicious looking. You're really gonna love this chicken spaghetti, I know it. Okay, so the first step that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut up one pound of chicken. This is about one pound of chicken. We're gonna cut this chicken into bite-sized pieces. All right, now that we have our chicken all cut up, we're gonna go ahead and add that into the Instant Pot. All right, now that we have the chicken cut up and in the Instant Pot, we're gonna go ahead and measure out the pasta. So what I like to do is I just put the pot right on top of my scale and then zero out the scale, and then add in the pasta. I'm serving four people, so that means I need about eight ounces of pasta. Um, the type that I'm using is this Italian cavatappi, and I um, get it from Kroger Smith's, um, the private selection brand. And it often goes on sale, and I really like the curly noodles, the way they're shaped. It's just kind of a fun, a fun type of pasta, but you can use a lot of different types of pasta for this. Rotini, um, penne, you can even use macaroni pasta. So we've got our pasta, we've got our chicken. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in um, two cups of water. And then I like to use this better than bouillon chicken base. I get mine in this huge container at Costco so it lasts me a long time. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and measure out two teaspoons of that. Um, it's kind of hard to get out of the measuring the measuring spoon sometimes, so I just kind of scrape it out with a butter knife like that. See, um, if you want, you can use chicken broth instead of better than bouillon, but I just never buy chicken broth, and I always have better than bouillon, so this is what I use, and it just has great flavor, and it's really small and keeps nicely in the fridge for many, many months. So, added that in. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in two tablespoons of butter. You wanna just go ahead and try to cover, kind of stir it a little bit, try to cover the noodles as much as possible with the liquid. Go ahead and put that right into the Instant Pot. And then we're gonna seal the pot up. Okay, we're gonna put the lid on. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the valve is set to sealing, not to venting, okay? And then, go ahead and just click the manual button down here. Um, some models, it's called the pressure cook button. But go ahead and push manual and set it to three minutes. So while the pot is building pressure, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I cut basil. So for this recipe, I use fresh basil. It's kind of, the key to the recipe. Um, it just tastes so fresh and delicious. I've also used um, basil from a tube before, and that works really well too. If all else fails, you can use dried basil, but I just don't prefer it. So what I do is I take the basil leaves and I kind of just roll them up, and then I just cut them like this with a knife. And that way you get these nice pieces of basil. And so we're gonna add that in after the pasta and chicken have cooked. Once the pot has beeped, um, it will start counting up and it has an L in front of it. And then we wait for five minutes and then we go ahead and release the pressure. So I just do that by moving the valve 
from venting or from sealing to venting like once all the pressure is released you can go ahead and remove the lid and then at this point I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pot to off and then set it to the saute mode which is right here give it a stir there is a bit of liquid in there but don't worry it's okay we're gonna go ahead and add in our cream cheese which is like half a brick of cream cheese we're gonna add in our garlic powder half a teaspoon and then our milk which is three quarters cup you can also use heavy cream or half and half even evaporated milk works for this um, step as well and you kind of wait for that cream cheese to melt once the cream cheese has melted we're gonna go ahead and stir in our Parmesan cheese so it's one cup of grated shredded or shredded Parmesan cheese then we're gonna go ahead and add in our sun-dried tomatoes that gives it so much flavor and then we're gonna measure out a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of and I I always um, cook with kosher salt but you can use regular table salt too if you like you can see there how delicious and creamy that looks yeah okay so now we're gonna go ahead and add in our basil that we chopped earlier basil and then we're gonna add in some spinach I just always eyeball the spinach about two big handfuls is what I do but you can do how much or how little you want it's a sneaky way to add in vegetables I'm gonna keep stirring and that spinach is really gonna cook down in just a minute here all right once the spinach kind of cooks down like that you can go ahead and turn off your pot or turn it to the keep warm setting all right we're just gonna go ahead and scoop this up into a nice pasta dish here and I like to just sprinkle mine with a little extra Parmesan cheese so that looks so delicious
Hey guys, it's Reagan Peterson, and today we're making butter chicken in the Instant Pot. The first thing you're gonna do is go to your Instant Pot and plug it in, and go to the saute setting, and go to more. Once this is hot on your display, add a little bit of oil and some butter. And stir it with a wooden spoon. Once the butter is all melted, it's time to add in your onion. And you're just gonna keep stirring it and saute it until the onion is pretty much translucent. It usually takes about three minutes. Once the onions get to about this point, that's when we're gonna add in our minced garlic. And that's gonna saute it for about 30 seconds. You don't want to cook it much longer than this or else it will burn. I've got some chicken just out in bite-sized pieces. I like to do this when it's partially frozen because that's when it's the easiest. I'm just going to add that in. I'm just going to stir this in with the onions and the garlic. Now I'm going to add in the rest of my ingredients. There's some garam masala, some minced ginger, tomato paste, a little bit of salt, and finally some chicken broth. Stir that all together. Finally, we're gonna add in a can of tomato sauce. We're gonna put the lid on. Make sure the valve is set to sealing. We're gonna go to a manual, do it for four minutes. After it's done cooking, we just let it, the pressure release naturally, and now we're just going to stir in some half and half. We warmed it, you can use half and half or heavy cream, and we warmed it up so it wouldn't curdle when we put it in. Then, to make it thicker, you can stir in a cornstarch slurry. Look how nicely that thickened out. That only took a couple of minutes. When it's all ready, you can ladle it into a bowl. And we like to eat ours with some naan bread and give it a try. Mmm, that was delicious. Get the full recipe. We're making chicken and gravy. Add one cup of water into the Instant Pot, then two pounds of chicken breasts. You can use chicken thighs for this recipe too, just whatever you prefer. One package of onion soup mix. Sprinkle over the top of the chicken. The chicken should be in an even layer at the bottom of the pot. And then one can of cream of mushroom soup. Scoop the soup, the condensed soup, on top of the chicken breasts. Try not to let it touch the bottom of the pot. If things that contain flour and thickeners touch the bottom of the pot, sometimes it will give you the burn signal. So we don't want that to happen. So just scoop it into little spoonfuls on top of the chicken breasts. Put the lid on the pot. Make sure valve is set to sealing. Set the manual button to between 12 and 15 minutes, depending on how big your chicken breasts are. I'm going to go for... 15 minutes. To Once the display says L005 for the chicken, you can release the pressure by moving the valve to venting. Then use like forks or tongs or something to get the chicken out. And then use a couple forks to shred it up. And turn your Instant Pot to the saute setting. This is the optional part. If you'd like to make your gravy a little bit thicker than what it is, get some cornstarch and equal parts cold water and mix it together in a small bowl. Stir until it's smooth and creamy so you don't get lumps in your gravy. Then pour that in. And the gravy should thicken really quickly if that saute uh, mode is on. Add the chicken back in. Now you have some nice chicken and gravy that you can serve with rice, mashed potatoes, cauliflower rice, plain, however you like it. Thanks so much for watching these 10 chicken recipes. I hope that you found one or two that you're gonna make this week. We will see you next week. Bye bye. And if you haven't already. How are you still sabotaging? How about you don't? <laughs> How about you just sabotage my video? Yeah. I don't understand. I have tried. Sabotage. S A B O T A G E. Sabotage? Sabotage. S A B O T A G E. Bloopers. <laughs>